Hello dear students this is Dr Aisha Nazuk here welcome back to my channel Rao Hub and uh, if you are a regular viewer you are well aware of the fact that we have variety of playlists available uh, here on my channel and those viewers who have landed first time on the channel uh, thank you for watching and uh, I hope that you are going to learn um, uh, you know efficiently by wa watching not only this video lecture but the other video lectures available uh, on this channel. So in today's topic we are going to cover the topic of uh, discrete probability distributions. So if you have, uh, if you want to, uh, you know, develop first the understanding of what is meant by a probability distribution, then you should watch my earlier videos regarding the topic of random variables and probability distributions, where I have uh, differentiated uh, the, con uh, you know, between discrete and random, mm, continuous random variables. And um, I have also defined the idea of uh, probability distribution. So today we are going to cover a specific uh, probability distribution which is called the binomial distribution and it is applicable on binary experiments or experiments having two outcomes. So that's why we can say that it's applicable on dichotomous scenarios. Uh, if you want to efficiently use these lecture notes, uh, it's highly advisable that you download uh, the book authored by Douglas Lind and others and uh, the topic is basic statistics for business and economics. The details are visible on the slide and the good part about this book is uh, answers are also given at the end of this book. So you can try to solve chapter exercises after watching this video and uh, you can easily download this book from the Genesis library and if you don't know about the Genesis library you can watch my video on how to download books from the Genesis library. So if you type in Google Rao Hub which is my channel's name uh, followed by uh, this video title how to download books from the Genesis library you can easily understand how you can download any book or mostly most of the many books are available on this library okay so coming to um, the main topic for this video which is uh, by, you know uh, probability distribution before I specifically talk about binary uh, or binomial probability distribution let me uh, uh, give you a, a quick refresher that whenever I use the word probability distribution it means that uh, it, it's a sort of a table or a display of data in which all the probabilities should if I mean I let's say I focus on the third point first so all the probabilities should add up to one so the sum of the probabilities should always be equal to one it should never be less than one or greater than one and by sum I mean of course adding all the probabilities. Uh, then it says that the list is exhaustive. That means uh, that in a probability distribution all possible outcomes are enlisted along with their corresponding probabilities, right? All possible outcomes. So when we enlist all possible outcome that means that the list is exhaustive. In other words, there is no such value of the random variable that is possible but we haven't listed in the table if that's the case then it's not a proper probability distribution so the list is exhaustive and the sum of the probabilities is one the second point says that the outcomes are mutually exclusive in other words the all possible outcomes all are distinct outcome for example if I talk about a coin so the distinct outcomes are head and tail and these are mutually exclusive in other words, if you observe a head on the coin, then it's impossible that there is a tail at the same time. I mean, one of these will occur at the same time. So, in a probability distribution, the outcomes are always mutually exclusive. Then, the individual probability of any possible value, for example, the probability of head on a coin is equal to 0.5, right? So, it meets this condition that the probability needs to be between 0 and 1 inclusive. If a value is impossible, its probability is 0. If a value is certain, its probability is 1. So these are the three basic requirements or axioms of a co proper probability distributions. Okay. So next we talk about binomial probability distribution. As the name suggests, this distribution is relevant to those situations where we have two possible outcomes, right? For example, if I take an exam, 
and uh, there are let's say two possible scenarios that either I'm going to pass this uh, exam uh, or I'm going to fail it so there are two possible outcomes right or for example if I you know toss a coin either it will land on head or tail so there are two possible outcomes right so in all those scenarios where we have two possible outcomes then we can apply binomial probability distribution but keep in mind not all experiments that have two possible outcomes are binomial right there are some certain conditions attached for example uh, first condition or the first property of the binomial probability distribution is that uh, the two possible outcomes are mutually exclusive for example if I was talking about coin then occurrence of head and tail it can't occur together so these are mutually exclusive second that the run random variable in which we are interested is the number of success in a fixed number of tries. now what does that mean for example if you toss a coin let's say 10 times and you want to say what is the probability that three times you will observe a head so you have repeated the experiment 10 times and you want to count uh, the number of success and by the way the success is uh, you know type of outcome in which you are interested so if, for example if you are interested in head then success is defined as occurrence of head but if someone is interested in let's say tail then success will be defined as occurrence of tail on the coin so whatever uh, the experiment is you note that how many times you are repeating it and we call it the number of tries as I said for example if you toss a coin 10 times then the number of tries is 10 the third probability uh, third property is that the probability of success and failure stays the same for each trial for example if I was, I was talking about coin so what is the probability of head in the first toss you're going to say 50 percent or 0 0.5 similarly on the second toss it remains 50 percent or 0 0.5 again so the probability of success and failure remains the same and by the way this happens if the actual sample space remains same for example if I uh, to toss a coin and it lands on head and let's say second time uh, I say that I'm not going to toss a coin with two sides I'm going to toss a special coin which has head on both sides so if I toss that particular coin then the probability of head will become one so this will violate the condition of binomial experiment in other words, in simple word, what am I saying is that the actual sample space should remain same on each trial. That is, the coin that I'm using on each trial, it should have one side having head, one side having tail. We will have more example, and then you will understand what is meant by the probability being, uh, you know, remaining same from each uh, trial to trial. And because of this fact that the probability of success remains the same and the sample space remains the same, so that means that the successive trials are independent. For example, if I talk about coin, so uh, the probability that we observe ahead on the first trial is by no means related to the probability of observing, let's say, ahead on the second trial. So different trials are independent. So these are the four conditions that collectively define the idea of binomial probability distributions and here I would like to focus on one thing that uh, in the context of uh, binomial probability distribution a uh, success or failure is not something I mean success is not that you have practically let's say won a contest or let's say if you participated in a marathon you won that marathon it's not like that it this is an outcome in which you are interested for example you are a financial analyst and you want to see uh, that if I invest in a particular stock what is the likelihood of observing let's say uh, losses suppose three times so you are actually trying to analyze the probability of loss so in your case loss will be defined as success are you getting my point what am I saying is success or failure in the context of binomial probability distribution is defined in success is the category in which you are interested or whose probability you are mainly analyzing whereas failure is the exact opposite for example if I'm an examiner I'm a teacher let's say and uh, I, I want to see 
uh, what is the probability that if I take a quiz let's say 10 times uh, so 2 times uh, student fail so I want to analyze the probability of failing in the quiz so I'll define success as the number of students who are failing so the idea of success or failure in the context of binomial probability is this, uh, d different and then the general connotation uh, we give to these words okay so let's um, discuss an example and by the way by using this uh, numerical uh, you know discussion I want to set the foundation for the formula that we are going to use in the binomial distribution uh, suppose that we want to observe that in how many ways can exactly one tail occur in two tosses of a coin now you see what is success here I am defining success as occurrence of tail now I want to see that if I uh, you know perform two tosses of the coin so in how many ways can I you know uh, observe one tail so uh, you know that if I toss two uh, coins then the sample space is either I have head on the both tosses head on the first tail on the second or tail on the first head on the second and the last one is tail on the both so this is the sample space now you see that we are interested in observing you know exactly one tail so you can see exactly one tail is occurring here on the second outcome and on the third outcome so there are two possible ways so by the way why there are two possible ways consider that we have let, let's say two slots and we have to fill these uh, using head and tail so for the first slot I have two choices it can e be either head or tail so let's say if it is head uh, I mean filled with head the second one should be tail so I have two choices for the first slot but one choice for the second slot so this is one possibility that the first one is filled with head then the second one will be filled with tail another choice is that the first one is filled with tail then the second slot must be filled with head so we have two possibilities here so actually I am trying to explain how we have this number 2 here I have I mean counted here and now I am diagrammatically explaining it and so, so in general if we have you know here we have n slots and we have to fill these r of these using a particular type for example we have two slots in total in this example and we want to fill one of these slots with let's say tail so the formula will be 2c1 and if you don't know what is the formula or, or what is this uh, notation then you should read about the formula of combination you should uh, uh, if you have no idea what is combination you should first watch my lecture on rules of counting which is also available in the same play playlist which you are exploring right now anyhow those of you who know the idea of combination so 2c1 ways and how do we expand it in general ncr is equal to n factorial over r factorial into n minus r factorial once again if you don't know what is factorial operator then it probably it's not the right time to explore further on this video lecture first you should go back to the basic lecture regarding factorial so it's about uh, you know rules of counting so if you watch my uh, video on rules of counting you will uh, you know understand what is factorial and what is combination operator anyhow uh, assuming that you know about factorials and the combinations so if I apply this formula so 2c1 is equal to 2 so now what happens let me further explain Here, for example if I was saying that we have two possibilities that on the first one I have a head and the second one I have a tail or vice versa on first one I have a tail and on the second one I have a head so you know that on coin the probability of head and tail is 0.5 so if I evaluate the probability of this black encircled uh, possibility it will be equal to 0.5 multiplied by 0.5 right now we have another possibility now these two are options so I'm going to add so this answer plus this answer so the answer for this the uh, orange encircled option this will again be 0.5 into 0.5 why because probability of head and tail in a coin is always equal to 0.5 
so this is 0 0.5 into 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 into 0 0.5 so it's actually equal to 2 times 0 0.5 into 0 0.5 so from where this 2 times is coming I can write this as 2c1 because you know I've just explained that 2c1 is equal to 2 so this will become 2 times 0 0.5 into 0 0.5 so in general I can say this is equal to 2c1 time probability of head raised to the power 1 and then probability of tail raised to the power 2 minus 1 which is again 1 so this is actually slowly and steadily I'm setting the foundation for the general formula of binomial distribution so this is the general formula for binomial probability distribution uh, so you can see that if we have to find the probability of success in binomial probability distribution it is equal to ncx which is again the formula for combination multiplied by pi power x now what is pi pi is the probability of success on each trial so here in the last example we were interested in tails so pi would have been probability of tail so pi power x for example if you see here we were interested in one tail so probability of tail power 1 and probability of tail sorry head power 2 minus 1 so here by the way we have only um, you know same probabilities so that's why I have written like probability of tail power 2 minus 1 but I can write probability of tail to the power 1 and then probability of head to the power 2 minus 1 to you know exactly match with this formula so ncx probability of success raised to the power x so whatever the number here are in this you know subscript of combination formula the number here is here in the power and the starting number n and the difference between these two number n minus x is the probability uh, you know is in the power of 1 minus pi right so let's do some more example to further clarify the general idea so let's say there are five flights daily from Petersburg via US Air Airways into Bradford and um, the other airport whatever I'm not reading the complete name to simplify the lecture anyhow so there are five fli flights and suppose the probability that any flight arrives late is 0 0.20 and we are interested in finding the probability that none of the flights are late today okay so let's have a look at the data so probability of a late flight is equal to 0.2 and we are observing a set of five flights so n is 5 pi is 0.2 so 1 minus pi will be 0.8 so we want to see what is the probability that none of the flights are late to date so that means the probability of late flight will be raised to the power 0 why 0 because we are observing that none is late so ncx would be decrypted as 5c0 and uh, probability of a late flight raised to the power 0 because we want we don't want any flight to be late and then 1 minus pi which is 1 minus 0 0.2 or 0 0.8 power 5 minus 0 so you can see the difference between these two 5 and 0 is raised to the power 1 minus pi so then we can easily solve this using calculator by the way you can use your calculator to solve this combination um, formula you can either use calculator let me show that you can also easily use um, excel just a minute so I'll in uh, you know add a new sheet here for example you want to find combination of uh, let's say 5c0 so what you are going to type is equal to comb and then uh, combin right so this is the excel built-in formula for combination and then I type 5 and let's say 0 so this will give me the answer for 5c0 and then I press enter and you can see it is equal to 1 just as in the slide we have written that it's equal to 1 okay anyhow so rest of the things are just calculations so you can do so that means there is approximately 33 percent likelihood that none of the flights will be late now here I am trying to compare two distributions suppose that 
the first upper panel of the distribution is relevant uh, to the you know same data that we just discussed that the probability of a late flight is equal to 0 0.2 so if you see if the probability of a late flight is equal to 0 0.2 and if I let's say in the lower panel of the diagram, I change the probability of late flight to 0.9. So in the lower panel, of course, the likelihood of late flight is very high. Suppose that I want to compare these two distribution. You can see, for example, if I find out what is the probability of 0, that means no flight is late. So we just calculated that it is approximately 32 or 33 percent likelihood of no late flight but if I change the probability of late flight to 0.9 then the probability that none of the flights will be late is very low why because in a given uh, you know trial the probability of late flight is very high so the probability that out of five flights none will be late is very low here so I can you know I've shown a graph here as well for example this is the same data we have five trials and the first one is relevant when probability of a late flight is equal to 0.2. Second one is when probability of a late flight is equal to 0.9. So I plotted these uh, two distribution. You can see that for the case when P is equal to 0.2, you know, the probability of all flight being late, this is decreasing. Why? Because probability of late flight is relatively a lesser number. But if the probability of a late flight is a very high number, then there is a high likelihood that out of five, uh, we are going to observe many late flights. So you can easily calculate the expected number of late flights to further clarify this concept. Expectation or mean is defined simply as n multiplied by p. So we kept n or the number of total set of flights as five. In the first scenario, the probability of a late flight was 0.2 whereas in the second scenario it was equal to 0.9 so you can see that when p is equal to 0.2 we expect that on average one flight will be late out of five whereas when probability of a late flight is very high then the expected value is approximately five on so so we are expecting almost all the flights will be late because you see the probability of a late flight in a single trial is very high it's a 90 percent likelihood so mean of a binomial distribution is denoted by this greek symbol is read as mu and uh, it is reserved for mean and how we calculate the mean we simply multiply number of trials with the probability of success and variance of a binomial distribution is equal to number of trials multiply by probability of success multiply by probability of failure so the, with this example i hope that you have now basic understanding of binomial distribution to further you know uh, consolidate the concept let's do another example a study by the illinois department of transportation concluded that 76.2 percent of front seat occupants use seat belts right people who are sitting in the front seat 76.2 percent of them are using seat belt now they sampled 12 vehicles what is the probability that the front seat occupants in exactly seven of these vehicles are wearing seat belt so what is the sample we have a sample size of 12 and in which uh, number we are interested exactly seven and what is my success or uh, category in which i'm interesting that is uh, you can see that the probability for which I want uh, the category is wearing seat belt. So probability of wearing seat belt will be P, which is given 76.2 or 0.762. So total 12 is the sample size out of which 7 should be wearing the seat belt. So I am raising a uh, probability of wearing the seat belt to the power 7 into probability of not wearing seat belt to the power 12 minus 7 so i can easily calculate that roughly there is a nine percent likelihood uh, that out of 12 vehicles seven will not uh, will be wearing the seat belts right okay uh, 
now uh, a, a general uh, comment about the you know shape of the binomial distribution if you change uh, the value of probability of success right for example here in this panel of diagram if you see sample size is fixed at 10 and probability of success is increasing so instead of ratifying this whole idea you can easily make the probability distribution in excel as well and how you do that uh, let me show that it's very easy it's not a big deal uh, let me move my I mean face here just a minute let me go to sheet one yeah so for example I want to make uh, the distribution for the case let me delete this one in fact I won't delete so uh, so I want to make a probability distribution for the case where n is 5 and p is 0.2 so you can see how I've calculated the probability I just told you that the formula for combination let me enlarge it a bit yeah so this is the formula and I have applied combination NC2 in the cell B2 I have N in the cell C2 I have X so let me zoom it back in zoom it out so you can see that I have N here in the B column N minus X in C column and X is the probability in uh, or the value of the random variable in which I am interested and then this is the probability of success so I have to according to the formula NCX so you can see combination 5 C X so that's why I put the value of uh, here as C2 in fact it, it shouldn't be C2 this should be A2 yeah and then I'll copy it paste it till down here okay so I've calculated this as I told you how I've calculated you can see NCX which is combination 5 which is in cell B2 comma cell X A A A2 and multiply by power of D2 to A2 so what is D2 you can see probability of success to the power X as we said that we raise probability of success to the power X and then probability of the failure to the power n minus x so I've already calculated the column for n minus x here so this this is how we can easily calculate uh, all the possible probabilities so let's say if I hide this so once I hide I can easily see the probability distribution for the case you can see that these are different type of scenarios so you can easily make any type of probability distribution in Excel so that's what I'm saying that once I'm you know discussing the idea of probability distributions and I'm telling you that if n remains constant that is the number of trials remains constant and probability of success changes so what we are going to observe that the binomial distribution uh, start you know starts to look like a bell shape if you see this is converging into a bell type of a diagram similarly if uh, you know sample sizes increases and you know there is no change in the probability of success we keep on changing the sample size then again the distribution will look like a bell shape so why we are interested in analyzing this once we study the idea of normal distribution then you will uh, you know will be able to comprehend this better 
that if n increases or probability of success increases then the binomial distribution converges to normal distribution which is very helpful uh, specifically uh, if we talk about the idea of confidence interval or hypothesis testing for now if you don't understand this concept no worries once we do hypothesis testing and confidence interval you'll be able to relate to these concepts that I'm discussing right now okay we have one ex another example the industry standard suggests that 10% of new vehicles require warranty service within the first year uh, and let's say the company has sold 12 uh, Nissans yesterday what is the probability that none of these vehicles required warranty service so first let me solve the first part so in total uh, we are selling 12 vehicles the probability of warranty within the first year is given to be 10% or 0.1 so if I want to find the probability that none of these vehicles require warranty then I'll do 12 C0 and the probability of you know warranty uh, which is given to be 0.1 to the power 0 and then 1 minus 0.1 to the power 12 minus 0 and so I can easily calculate and 28.2% is the likelihood now the part B says what is the probability that exactly one of these vehicles require warranty so I'm simply going to do 12 C 1.1 power 1 and 1 minus 0.1 power 12 minus 1 okay well, uh, the part D says uh, that we have to compute the mean and standard deviation as already told you that the mean of a binomial distribution is simply n multiplied by probability of success so which is 1.2 here which is the expected number of vehicles that require warranty service out of a total of 12 vehicles so what is variance the formula for variance is n time probability of success multiplied by probability of failure so 12 into 0.1 into 0.9 which is 1.08 next we will introduce the idea of cumulative probabilities as the name suggests in cumulative probabilities we are cumulating or we are adding different types of probability for example if in a binomial distribution n is 12 p is 0 0.6 and we have to find the probability that x is less than or equal to 5 so that means if i do it without using the idea of cumulative probabilities i have to find the probability of x is equal to 0 1 2 3 4 and 5 and then I'm going to add all these probabilities but we have a shortcut without computing the individual probabilities we have some tables that you can easily download from the internet so I've downloaded this table from the internet binomial cumulative tables so in these tables you have different possible values for the sample size for the probabilities and so on so in this table you can see that I am focusing on the part of the table which is relevant to n is equal to 12 and I have highlighted 5 why I have highlighted 5 because the question says x is less than or equal to 5 so I will go in the row title 5 and I will go in the you know column title 0 0.6 because in the question it is given p is equal to 0 0.6 so in the column I will pick 0 0.6 in the row I will pick 5 and this 0.158 is directly the cumulative probability that x is less than or equal to 5 so the benefit of using the cumulative table that is without finding the probability of x is equal to 0 1 2 3 4 and 5 I haven't computed these individually so I have directly uh, you know used this table and this number 0 0.158 uh, by the way let me type uh, here so we were interested in finding the probability that x is less than or equal to 5 so if we were to do it directly I should have found x is equal to 0 then x is equal to 1 so on till probability that x is equal to 5 so instead of finding all these probabilities what we have done we have directly used this table and uh, the, the answer is 0 0.158 
and by the way if you want to find this probability cumulative probability in excel then you can easily use this function is equal to b i n o m dot d i s t which is short for binomial distribution so in the first space you should write required number of success for example here uh, uh, sorry we are uh, observe yes it required number of success or the value of the random variable so here we were interested in 5 so i have written it 5 total number of trials which is 12 here as you can see n is equal to 12 then comma probability of success once again it was given to be 0.6 so i put 0.6 here comma 1 when i write 1 what does that mean it is giving me uh, the output in the form of cumulative so if instead of 1 i type 0 then it will not give me uh, you know the answer for cumulative so this is the formula that either you can use in excel or you can use the binomial cumulative tables uh, then I have also you know I have already discussed that this is the cumulative binomial probabilities fun excel function so for example in the same question if I want to find probability that x is greater than or equal to 6 then again I can use the cumulative table how this time if I read it again 6 and 0 0.6 it will give me the probability that x is less than or equal to 6 so if I subtract it from 1 uh, by the way I, I this is a type um, you know I know there is an error in this slide because if x is greater than or equal to 6 just a minute I should write so I require it probability that x is greater than or equal to 6 so the required probability is probability that x is greater than or equal to 6 so this should be equal to 1 minus the probability that x is less than 6 which means it is equal to 1 minus the probability that x is less than or equal to 5 so what I am going to do I am going to read the table cumulative table for this and I will subtract it from 1 so we just read it actually this same is applicable so I will delete this table from here insert this one here yeah so this is equal to 1 minus point 158 which is the value that I have read from here so 1 minus 0.158 th that comes out to be 1 minus 0 0.158 comes out to be 0 0.842 okay so this is how we can use the cumulative table for finding the probability in terms of greater than values as well because the greater than can always be expressed as 1 minus the less than type okay and if I have to use Excel I can type 1 minus the cumulative probability and in terms of you know the number of success but I'll better sorry I'll better say that I'll delete this from here because here there was a typo again I'm sorry for this anyhow uh, if you understand this is the fun formula so if I have to find for greater than or equal to 6 instead of typing this I will type 1 minus this entire thing that will give me exactly the same answer as 0.842 you can try that in excel so uh, this is the end of lecture video lecture on binomial distribution um, thank you for watching till the end and I most welcome your comments and your feedback in the comment section uh, if you haven't still subscribed to the channel, please support our initiative, our learning initiative. Subscribe to the channel. I've also mentioned my email address. You are more than welcome to develop a professional connection with your instructor, Dr. Aisha Nazuk Rao. See you again in our next video. Thank you.